The Normal Elevator is a game that seems innocent at first, mostly played out for old meme culture. Do you like what? There's a lot of references to other games like Speedrun, Get Eaten, and a lot of old popular Roblox games, but this game isn't actually as innocent as it seems. In fact, there was a secret right in front of our faces the entire time. A door in the lobby with a secret code to enter. If you are anything like me, then you probably still have this code memorized. 3792. We will discuss the original Gavin story, where it left off, the new Gavin story, and everything I can find that has to do with it, and I will try and piece together everything I can to hopefully create a timeline easy to understand. And before we get into the explanations, we'll have to go through the full story at least once, so let's cut this typical YouTuber shit out already. Entering the door, you're met with a red room having dead bodies on the floor, telling you that Gavin is near and Gavin is ready. The leaderboard that says how many floors people have visited now says how many deaths people have, and the elevator is ready. Walking inside is just like the <coughs> normal elevator, but when you get teleported, you know how long I've been waiting? Do you know what it feels like to be abandoned? To be thrown around? To be someone's ragdoll? Do you have any idea what it feels like to love someone? And to have your heart broken by them? Well, I'm over it. I have learned it's just a part of life. I have learned being neglected is normal. to live a normal life in a normal city and now what <sighs> it's been one year since I died over the course of the year I've been watching waiting waiting for people to know my story Waiting for people to feel the pain that I felt. And now I got you guys right in the palm of my hands. Why am I showing you these places? I'm showing you your ignorance. You are oblivious. I've been giving signals, calls for help. And you have ignored them all. I have been here the whole time, waiting for you to care, and you never did. But now, you're in my control. I can show you your mistakes. And soon enough, we will be able to talk about it face to face. Even if you don't want to. But why when you, you did come here to see me. Right? Let me get straight to the point. You're all the same. And that's why you're here. You don't care about me. You only want to entertain yourselves. No one cared about me when I died. No one cared about the signals I've shown. You're all bad people. This world will be better when it's rid of everyone like you. I'm not the monster here. It's you. It's about time. It's time to take you out of this world. And let me tell you a little secret. Three days I have been alive. Seven days until someone noticed. Nine doors ahead. I hope you understand which door to pick, or else there will be consequences. Guys! Listen to me! He's not the real Gavin! I'm the real Gavin! I'm being possessed! I need you guys to help me! HELP ME! Will you shove it? You guys know now. But it doesn't matter anymore. You guys won't be able to witness anything again. 
Javelin won't be able to witness anything again. It all ends for you. Right. Now. And that's all we've seen of the original Gavin story. But isn't it quite odd we had to go through the old normal elevator lobby to find it? Surely behind the same door in the new lobby, it's the same exact thing, right? Well, this door doesn't have a keypad. There's no legitimate way to get past this door, but with the fall emote, you can shift lock through it and find yourself in front of another red elevator. This one is different. It's bigger. The keypad that was missing is next to it and broken. And when we head inside... You shouldn't have come. You are not welcome here, but it's too late. Now, sadly, this loading screen doesn't lead anywhere. They never bothered expanding on the new Gavin story, so let's head back into the old one and try to understand what's being told here. First, since it doesn't really matter as much, let's go over the locations shown. The first place Gavin brings you is a replica of the speedrun stage, the path ahead being consumed by darkness, and instead there's a wall you can climb to your right. Climbing up it brings you to a brand new area with four elevators. The next location is the adjacent floor, being a forest with a tent in the middle. The difference here is that the tree next to the tent has Gavin's lifeless corpse hanging from it, with a suicide note at his feet. We will come back to this note, but let's not get off track and pay attention to the stages. The next location is the falling elevator floor, and normally the elevator's floor would fall during this, but this time Gavin just talks through it. The final location is a set of nine doors. Every other door just kills you but the second door lets you pass. The reasoning is because Gavin tells you every number of the code except for two. And of course, the ending room being a big open room with Gavin over by the reception area. Now, how about we start piecing this story together and there's one thing that kicks it off, that note. The note Gavin left right beside his lifeless hanging corpse. Dear Duffy, I've come to the realization that you don't love me anymore and ever since I've moved into this town, it's constantly been depressing. But when I saw you, it gave me hope. I instantly fell in love, but every time I come to your doorstep to say hello, I get scared, my heart broken by you. I've heard every hateful word you've said about me behind my back, and I thought she hates me right now, but if I treat her better, then we could be happy again, but you still hate me. So I'm sorry I bothered you. I've moved out of the house and will never bother you again. You don't have to see my face again. It's okay, my buddy Michael has moved into the house, and he's a nice guy, maybe nicer than me. I hope you treat him well. Cheers, love Gavin. Gavin was in love with a woman who didn't love him back. He lived a normal life, but everyone has their breaking point. He couldn't take it anymore. After trying so hard, attempt after attempt was futile, but it still feels like we're missing something. A normal life in a normal city. A normal city. That's it. The Normal City is a less known game by the same creator as The Normal Elevator. This game was created before The Normal Elevator, but takes place after Gavin's death. This is evident by one of the houses being occupied by Michael himself, who was mentioned in the note. Not many of the locations in this game are worth bringing up for the story, but I'll go over some of the ones that are. Jeff's house is the residence of Michael, meaning that Gavin most likely lived here before. All the characters in this house take the appearance of Gavin, but slightly different, weirdly enough. On the other side of the city, there's a forest. This forest could be where... <coughs> and the final location isn't even one you can go inside. There's a gray building at the end of the road. Now, normally we wouldn't be able to know what this building is, but the description of the game reads that there's a region button behind the gray office building, meaning that this is an office. Let's backtrack to the normal elevator and revisit Gavin now that we have more information. The first room was speedrun, but at the top of it, there was an unfamiliar gray building with four elevators. It only makes sense what this room is now. Gavin's workplace an office, holding the last elevator Gavin took before his death. The second location, the forest, where Gavin died. I'm not really sure what the following elevator could mean, but it could be a metaphor for how Gavin's life ended because he fell in love. And the ending, this ending will be harder to piece together. Since this is an unfinished version of the game, I think it's fair that we can go back and look at even previous versions of this ending and hopefully get some clues we've been missing. What we'd know before we do though, is that Gavin is not the one doing all this. He's possessed begging for us to help him post-mortem. There's no way for us to find out who is possessing him, or is there? Let's go back to a previous version of the normal elevator that was only present for a short amount of time eight years ago. This version continues the story, past the old to be continued screen. Since this version is so old, all of the footage of it is really bad. 
I will be remaking the footage, but the original sources will be linked in the description if you don't believe me. You know, I loved Gavin. I truly did. You know, all that stuff I said about not being loved back, it's still true. We all felt this way about Gavin. He's the one who decided to go with Duffy instead of us. When we would go out into the forest and tell campfire stories, Gavin wasn't there. When we would wear masks on Halloween and scare their people, Gavin wasn't there. You know where Gavin was? He was with the wrong lover. This outcome could have been predicted. Three days I've been alive was one of the things that they said in their speech. If you find the gravestone in the normal city, Gavin was only alive for two days. We thought that this speech was about Duffy. No, it was about Gavin. He tried so hard for Duffy to love him, he knocked everyone else out of his life. Missing Halloween parties, camping, and more just to try and be better for Duffy. But it was futile from the start. There was someone out there for Gavin, but he tried so hard for someone who didn't love him. Gavin's gravestone has someone else's next to it, actually. Their name is Chloe, but they died before Gavin. There's only one thing to prove that Chloe is the one possessing Gavin that I'm aware of, and that's them both being dead and their gravestones being together, but who knows. In this speech, they say we and us when talking about themselves, so that could be referring to his friends Michael, Jeff, and others. This timeline is messy and probably won't ever be 100% solved. There's a ghost Gavin hidden in the forest in the normal city, but I haven't found any way to activate him. Inside of Duffy's house, there's a button to send love to Harlem, which could mean that Duffy was in love with Harlem and not Gavin. The last mention of Gavin was two years ago, saying that his story will be continued in a major update, but that never happened. Let's finally build my estimated timeline of events. To be transparent, I understand that there's a lot of holes in this, but it's my best understanding. Gavin was an optimistic man who lived a normal life at first. He moved into the city and picked up a job at an office. He saw this woman from his city, Duffy, and fell in love at first sight. He used to try and introduce himself, but he could never build the courage to do so. One day, he found out that Duffy didn't like him at all. In fact, she hated him. She said terrible things about him. Gavin didn't let this get him down though. His optimism wouldn't let him. He even tried harder and would do anything to make Duffy like him tuning out people that were close to him to do so. These people missed Gavin, especially Chloe. Chloe was the first to go, after Gavin missed their Halloween party a year ago and recently missed their camping trip. She loved Gavin, but Gavin had his mind focused on the wrong lover. This obviously did impact Gavin, sending him into a state of depression. He's just lost someone close to him, and it looks like Duffy will never love him back. She had her mind set on Harlan, which was Gavin's neighbor. Gavin eventually wrote his suicide note from his house, and he went in for one last shift of work. He took a normal elevator in a normal city down to the front, where he got into his car. There's no hope anymore. Gavin drove into the forest, the same forest that he missed the camping trip in, and with his suicide note in his hand, he tied a rope in the camping spot. He hung it up by a tree branch and stepped inside. His note fell to his feet as he gasped for air, eventually losing consciousness. Gavin was gone, stuck in purgatory alongside Chloe. Chloe took control of Gavin's soul, using it to torment whoever would take that elevator next. It could be Harlem, Duffy, Michael, whoever it was, they would know. They would hear those cries for help, and they would know Chloe and Gavin's story. I really hope that Gavin's story has continued one day, but it's kind of insane how the normal elevator is even up with a literal hanging corpse in their subgames. Gavin was anything but a normal man. I think Harlem said it best. Being too normal is weird, so just be not normal instead. I want to end this video by saying that if you have suicidal thoughts, you matter. Please call 988. Never do something you can't take back. Something you will regret. I know that this video has been short, but I've tried putting more effort into this one video than I ever have before. I hope that's obvious. If you know anything more about this story that I've missed, I would love a lengthy comment talking about it, and you'll definitely be pinned. I would like to give a special thank you to Sybil This, my only member as of now, who is supporting me at top tier. If you want special perks like being mentioned at the end of videos, make sure to check them out at the join button below. 
I honestly have no idea if this video will be monetized or not. Either way, thank you all for watching. I've been Altby. Peace.